A couple of years ago, the Fitzwilliam Museum was given a large collection of Parian busts. It's called the Glynn Collection, named after the man who collected them. These 370 objects are made out of uh, Parian, which is porcelain with a material added to it called flux. On one hand, it makes it quite unstable to work with, but it also gives the appearance of marble, and because of this, it was a really popular material to use. I'd been working in Parian for a few years and I was delighted when Helen Ritchie from the museum came to talk to me to see if I'd be willing to work in response to this new acquisition into the museum. And in a way, the whole project grew out of that first conversation. What Parian might be, what Flux could talk about and how we could maybe present or unpack this collection in a way that hopefully brings new stories into the museum. So within the main installation, within the Octagon Room, we took this idea of flux, of change, of things always being renegotiated and made a large display in the middle, uh, which looks very much like packing crates. And we wanted this idea that this was the first time the Fitzwilliam as a museum got to unpack and view this huge collection that they'd acquired. So taking this idea of flux, this idea of change, I was interested in looking at these historical people and seeing what would happen if we put their lives into flux? What happened if we started to question these people that had been celebrated and immortalised in these busts? So I was interested in taking six historical episodes of British Empire and seeing what would happen if we looked at some of the less positive stories that happened and were perpetrated by the British overseas. Fortunately, within the collection, we had a, a number of people we could we could take out and spotlight. And these range from people like Colin Campbell to Queen Victoria. Unlike other museums which separate objects into different types, the museum very consciously tries to put collections of furniture with paintings. And I wanted to take this idea of the country house and bring and pull together these narratives from the empire into country house wallpapers. The wallpapers in the Octagon Room are newly created wallpapers and they use historical images of atrocities that happened during the British Empire. There was a lot of research went into pulling images that were still available. Some were photographs and some were magazine illustrations. I was really conscious when I was doing this that these are highly edited images. I can only work with what I can find. So I'm conscious that none of these wallpapers tell in any way the true story of the empire, but hopefully they give a more balanced account of what happened and take it from a slightly less Western European viewpoint. To take one example, one of the walls looks at uh, the Bengal famine. In the 1880s, there was a huge famine in India and the British exported a lot of food over to avoid uh, mass starvation. About five years later, there was a second famine this time there was political pressure in England not to release as much money to the famine effort because it was felt that as disaster was averted before, almost Britain had oversupplied. The result of this was about 5.5 million people died. This in its own is horrific. But at the same time that this famine was going on, Disraeli talked about Queen Victoria as the Empress of India. And it was this disjuncture between what was going on overseas and how things were being presented within England that really made me want to start exploring these issues in a bit more depth. And colonialisation happened very close to home as well. The Irish famine is, is featured in one of the walls. And almost I feel unless we understand what Britain did overseas, we won't understand the response that other people have towards us as people and as a country. And I think at a time when we're changing our place in the world and we're trying to renegotiate our place in the world. Unless we understand these things, it's going to be very hard for us to understand people's responses to us. So as well as the installation in the Octagon Room, I was very keen to work with the museum and make some pieces myself and also work with pieces from the Glynn Collection to help people stop and review what was already in the galleries. So within the top floor of the museum, there's a number of interventions. One of the starting point for me was probably Ariadne. And I was interested in how we can make a connection between this new collection coming in 
and the existing objects within the museum. In classical mythology, Ariadne gives a ball of wool to Theseus, who goes into the Minotaur's labyrinth, slays the Minotaur, and uses the wool to find his way out again. And so within the museum cases, Ariadne is linked by a piece of red thread to a sculpture from the 19th century, a bronze of Theseus and the Minotaur. And for me, this physically links the new collection coming in with the existing collections within the museum. Next door to it, there's two pieces from the Glynn collection of Narcissus, and he's been placed in the case with a number of mirrored glass uh, balls. And Narcissus in mythology fell in love with himself while looking into a pool. And I was interested in working with this idea of reflection. And these mirrored pools not only reflect Narcissus back to himself, but as a museum visitor, as you go up to the case, you see yourself reflected in the display. And not only do you see yourself reflected, but you see the backdrop and the architecture of the museum behind you. You're physically placed within the museum. And I'm interested in who feels as though their histories are being told within the museum, who sees themselves within the collection, and who comes into the museum and feels that they've maybe been excluded in ways because of the way that museums have dealt with history and dealt with objects. There was a piece I found in the Glynn collection called The Young Migrant. And I was, I was drawn to this when I was working on the exhibition. It was while we were going through the Brexit vote and the, the, the debate about who should come into Britain, who should be allowed to be here. And I thought this piece spoke volumes about how Britain is dealing with some of these issues. For this exhibition, he's been placed surrounded by the four seasons who all look away from him. And in a way, I think the Glynn collection could be seen as a metaphor for this these new objects coming into the museum, trying to find a place, trying to be part of the collection, trying to find a way of becoming part of what the Fitzwilliam is. And also, they allow us to reflect, to review what's already in the museum, and hopefully learn more about what's already here with this new adoption of a new collection of objects coming in. We all come to museums with knowledge that we bring with us, and in a way, a huge reason for doing this exhibition was to bring new knowledge about the, a more balanced view of what Britain did in terms of the empire. The intervention of C and C is, is trying to explore this. It's a double-headed uh, new parian piece where the eyes of the two girls have been taken away. And I was interested in exploring the knowledge that we learn at school the knowledge that we learn from our families and how that allows us to view the world and how it distorts maybe the realities of the world. A lot of my work is about pulling objects together from different places, of making do, of pulling the objects I can find together to tell stories in the best way I can. And in a juxtaposition to the Gainsborough, which is all about showing what somebody has, I hope my piece speaks about pulling together with what you've got, of making up a life, of making up a way of getting through the world with the things that we're given and not necessarily having to own. I was really delighted to get the opportunity to work in response to the bronze collection at the Fitzwilliam. The method of making bronzes through lost wax is really quite similar to casting in clay. As I look more at the bronzes, I realise just what an odd collection they are. Particularly, there's one piece that looks like it's come out of a Hieronymus Bosch painting. And I was keen on pulling out these oddities within the collection and making new works that helped reflect what was already there and hopefully help people pause and look at them again. Elsewhere, they were much more playful. There's a Cupid who's got standing on one leg and he felt a little bit lonely to me, so I've made him a little partner. And the two of them now are doing a little Morecambe and Wise dance in the case, and I think they're looking quite happy with that. There's a beautiful cast bronze of an ostrich and I've remade that using moulds in my studio. The head of the duck comes from a bottle opener and its neck's made out of a teapot spout and it's pulling these things together to make new objects is, is kind of at the core of, of my practice. Within the Courthold Gallery I was drawn to two bronzes, one's of Leader and the Swan and the other one is of Ganymede and Zeus. And I'm interested in who gets talked about within museums and what we think is allowed to be talked about in museums. 
And that both these bronzes depict very violent sexual scenes between people and animals that weren't necessarily consensual. And I made a new piece called Other Kinds of Love, which is an amalgamation of objects, including a half-naked Barbie and an action man head, and a very camp figurine of a young dandy. And I just wanted to allow space for difference, for identity politics to be talked about in an oblique way, but also referencing that these conversations are already going on in museum collections. It's just we seldom talk about them. As a ceramicist, it felt really important to work with the existing porcelain collections at the Fitzwilliam. And they're huge and they're varied and they're incredibly playful. I decided to mainly work in black clay. A lot of my work is about absence and loss and about who is silenced and who doesn't get to be heard. And black, for me, is a colour that speaks of loss. Quite often in my figurines, I'll replace heads with cones or with uh, egg shapes. And again, this is about taking the physical voice away and allowing a space for multiple voices to be heard. Some of the interventions are purely based on form. There's a beautiful oriental elephant and underneath I've placed six pieces that are spouts just to mirror what's going on above and hopefully make people see the elephant again. Elsewhere, new figurines have been placed in dialogue. There's a clamshell head that's being fired at by two of the figurines that are already in the galleries. So the whole show has been about flux. It's been about looking at history and flux. It's been looking at the flux of this collection of Parian coming in and changing the museum. And it's a temporary exhibition. So what I've done here is in flux. It will change, it will come down. The objects will go back into store to be brought out again by other people to talk about different subjects. But it's been a real joy to be part of that flux.